Actually, someone said it, it was the flames on my book that set the alarm off. It, it's time for a book plug here. Okay, it's a hot one, really is a hot one. It, it's such a good book. We're, we're doing this a study on the book of Acts, and this book is called Joy Unspeakable, and it's by Martin Lloyd-Jones, and it's on the bookshop, and it's only £7.50. I can't bring it any lower than that. I'll be in trouble. Look at that, £7.50 for that. So it's a wonderful book. I, I, I thoroughly recommend it. This, we're doing this series on the book of Acts, and I'm loving it, just getting the taste and the feel of the, those first Christians and uh, the, 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 just the way they lived and the way they loved and the way that they just made Jesus known. Beautiful. And um, we're, we're in, uh, we're, we've got a really very dramatic moment. We're in Acts chapter 6, and uh, it's, it's, it's about all about Stephen, the first martyr. And, uh, you know, it, it, but before I get into this, I'm going to read from that passage in a moment. Do you ever, you know, when, do you ever look, across, look at the world or look, at, look at across the nations or, or, or even look at your own life and, and you think, and think, where is God? Where is he? Do you ever do that? Where's God? Where is God? What is he? Where is he? Where can I find him? Well, I, I want to try and answer that question this morning. Um, so if you've got a Bible... We're in Acts chapter 6, and we're at verse 8, and I'm going to read a few verses from there, and then move on to chapter 7. So chapter 6 and verse 8. So, you ready? Here we go. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Would you? I mean, what, a, a man full of God's grace and power, what does that look like? I th- here's just a man. I guess when you've been forgiven much, you 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 know how to you you love much, don't you? Full of grace. What a, what? A, would you like that to be said of you? A man, a woman, full of grace and the power of the Lord. Whoa! Is that that would be a good thing to be said about you, wouldn't it? Well, anyway, there we are. Better get on. I haven't. Oh yes, there's a clock. Where was I? Oh yeah. Sorry. I've read one verse. Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. But opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freed men, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the province of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they couldn't stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we've heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law, and they seized Stephen, and they brought him before the Sanhedrin, and they produced false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place, the temple, and against the law. We've heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw his face. It was just shining like the face of an angel. Let's turn over, and we're now in chapter um, 7 and verse 44. Here we go, verse 44. It's a, so Stephen is giving his defense. He's giving them a history lesson, okay? Our ancestors, said Stephen, had this tabernacle or this tent of meeting of the covenant law with them in the wilderness, and it had been made as God directed Moses according to the pattern he'd seen. After receiving the tabernacle, our ancestors, under Joshua, brought it with them when they took the land from the nations that God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David, who enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? 
Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You're just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors didn't persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one, and now you've betrayed and murdered him. You who've received the law that was given through the angels, but you haven't obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and they gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At that, they covered their ears and yelling at the tops of their voices, they rushed at him, they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. While the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. And while they were stoning him, what a horrible thing, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell on his knees and he cried out, Lord, don't hold this sin against them. And when he'd said this, he fell asleep. So here's this lovely man, Stephen. He's in trouble because... He'd spoken against the temple. Of course, the temple, it, 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 it was special. It, it, it was a symbol of God's presence with them, and God's presence really was there. In their histories, the people of Israel, you know the story, how, how God took these people out of captivity in, in, in Egypt and, and, and into the wilderness, and, and do you remember, he, he, he came close to them. And do you remember Moses famously said, Lord, if you don't come with us, we're not going anywhere. Because like Moses knew that, 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 like you and I, we want, we, want, we want to know God's presence with us. So, so Moses said, if you're not going with us, Lord, we're not going anywhere. So God gave them the tent of meeting. You know, they were in tents, so God came and lived in a tent. Tent of meeting. They couldn't go too close because he's holy and they're not. But he's there. He's with them. This is God's heart. He wants to be close to his people. So they're camping, he's camping, tent of meeting. They get to the promised land and David says, right, I'm in a house, I want you to have a house. But God says, no, 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 it's not your prerogative. I, 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 I decide how, how this works. And so it was Solomon who, who built the temple. But this temple where God's presence was meant to be, it had, become a, it, 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 it had just become a, a religious system. It had become... It, it, it had just become a formal a formality. It had become full of rules and formalities, and the, the, the joy of God's presence was gone. And that's why Jesus said, "This this temple, um, I, 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 I'm going to I'm going to destroy it." Think of his own body that he would destroy. Because see, the, the answer is, where is God's presence? It is in people. That's where God's presence is to be found. He has come close. In the wilderness, he was fairly close, a tent over there. But Emmanuel, God with us, the heart of God, he wants to dwell in people, in the lives of ordinary people. Do you remember the woman at the well? This dear lady said to Jesus, where, where should we worship, on this mountain or, 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 or in, in Jerusalem? Where, where should we worship? And Jesus said, the time's coming when it's neither, neither. People will worship in spirit and truth. And then he goes on to say, the, the water out of this well, you're going to get thirsty, but the water that I want to give you will well up in you to eternal life. God, Jesus saying, I've, we've come cl I've come close. I want to dwell in you. Jesus, then look, you go on to John 14. Jesus promised to his disciples. He said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Where does God dwell? In a building? No, in the lives of men like Stephen, whose life began to glow and shine, and people like you and me, whose lives can begin to glow and shine 
because of the presence of the Lord. Colossians chapter 1. We're going through Colossians in our King's Dailies. I'll talk about that later. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Isn't that, do you find that astonishing? Where does God dwell? In a temple, in a cathedral? He's come close. He wants to invade your life and my life. Do you find that stunning? That's why we don't call this a sanctuary. It's a room, okay? In a sense, your, 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 your life is a sanctuary. Christ in you. And that's why Stephen, this dear man, he's, just, he's full of the grace of God. There's just there's the grace and kindness and something oozing out of this guy. And, 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 and he's shining when people are swearing at him. He's shining. Well, how do you do that? Because the life of the risen Lord Jesus can come into you, into your life. And fill you. That's what I, you see. Becoming a Christian is a very radical thing. Oh, it really is. It's not just believing a few beliefs. It's being born again. It's it, it's it's Christ in you. It's inviting the Lord Jesus into your Lord. Come, forgive me, cleanse me, be Lord of my life. Come and fill me. And and and, and the wonderful Holy Spirit, the, God's empowering presence coming into our life. It's a radical thing to be a Christian, a Christ one. Are you, are you, are you, are you a Christian? Do, do you know you're a Christian? Does Christ live in you? Has the Holy Spirit invaded your life? It, it, it's a radical thing. It cost Stephen, cost him his life. It might not cost you your life, but it might cost you your cool image. It might cost you your reputation with those you regard as, in, as trendsetters around you. It might cost you. But the, re the reward, the payback, the, the future, <laughs> it's glorious. It's glorious. It's wonderful. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do you see? He dwells in you and me. Paul tells us in, in Colossians 1.26, this is, a, I'm going to read this to you because it's just, it's just, this is great. It, it, this is a wonderful verse. This is, this, read it. Be quiet and read it. Okay, I will. Colossians 1 and verse 26. It, listen to this. This is beautiful. I'm nearly there. Colossians 1, 26. Here we go. Um, he's talking about God's mystery. He said, the mystery that's been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people, to them God has chosen to make known amongst the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. What is this mystery? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Isn't that this is this mystery? That's what God was hinting at all through the Old Testament with the, 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 the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, the temple. It's him coming closer and closer and closer until you get the real thing. Christ actually in your life because you've been made worthy by the cross, the blood of Jesus shed for you. Are you a Christian? Folks, if you're not sure this morning, make sure. You can, you can become a Christian this morning. Come and speak to me afterwards or any of us here. If you're not sure, we can, we can talk, we can, we can pray together, and you can go away knowing you are a Christian. Christ in you, giving you a hope and a future. Is that awesome? I think it is. So where does God dwell? In people. In me, in you. That is awesome. And it can cause us to, to glow like Stephen. And you, you probably wouldn't be the first to see it. It'll be those around you who'll spot it. Christ in you. But I'm, I've just got a few more things to say here. God has a bigger purpose, a bigger mystery, that's bigger than just little me on my own, because 
He's gathering a church, a family, a bride. He's gathering a people. This, this is the heart of the mystery. It's not just me. It's, it's, it's us. This is the, 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 this is the pinnacle of God's purposes in the earth. You know, you thought he might have had a great plan when he created the, you know, the stars, the universe. This is the pinnacle of God's whole purpose of creation, to build, to gather a people. The bride. <laughs> that's, his, that's, that's his purpose. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2, chapter 4, listen to verse 4, listen to this. As you come to him, he's the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God, you also like living stones, you are being built together into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices. That's what we've been doing this morning as we worship. We've been sacrifice of praise like a sweet aroma coming up before the Lord. We're the temple now. You are, you and me, little old you, little old me. We're, we're, we're a place where God's presence dwells. Are you getting it? Do you get this? It, it's just beautiful. God's wonderful purpose. And he, and he goes on, at verse, nine, verse 9. You are a chosen people. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're God's special possession. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, this is the this is tops. This is the, this is this is the heart of God's plans. How, a royal priest. I, I could go. I haven't got time. You could go into Isaiah chapter fifty-four and speak about these these different stones, all these wonderful different stones. You, me, all the and how we're like stones that are being put together into something beautiful. You, God's tre- God's treasure possession. You. It's, a bit, it's almost a joke, isn't it? Me, God's treasure possession. Yes, because Christ in you changes everything. And like Stephen, something just has to show and come out. Folks, this is, this is awesome. And I, but I, I come to a, I, I, I leave us with this, I want to challenge us now with this quote. I don't know if you noticed when I read this just now, where... Um, Stephen quotes from Isaiah chapter 66. And he says this, Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me? Declares the Lord. What kind of house will you build for me? And I want to ask us that individually. What kind of house would you build for the Lord? What kind of... What, 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 is, is there some rubbish in some of those rooms? Is there, is, is there stuff in some of those rooms you'd be ashamed the Lord to come and... Well, the Lord... I mean, you know, it's just, it just barely compa- com- compatible... What kind of house? Other areas that you've not opened up to the Lord in your life? Folks, this is serious stuff. You know, this, there's something wonderful going on here. And, and I'm not, you know, it's not a case of try harder. It's a case of turning and saying, Lord Jesus, I don't want that. I want you. I want your presence in my life. It's, it's a matter of, of making some big decisions. Jesus said, if, if, if your right hand offends you, just cut it off. Now, he, he didn't mean that literally. But what he's saying is take drastic action. Let me, let me be real about this. If you are watching things on the internet that are not glorifying to the Lord and are causing you to stumble, get rid of your internet. That's cutting your left hand off. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? You say, oh no, I can't do that. I can't get rid of my internet. So you'll live with compromise. Folks, please, we're, we're living in an age that is, that is bombarding us in all kinds of ways. What kind of house will you build for me? What kind of place will you build for me? You can't serve two masters. Do you hear? You've got this radical opportunity to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. Dear, 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 dear friends, what kind of house? But the lovely thing is you're not on your own. And I want to speak to us corporately together. What kind of house will we build? For the Lord. We've got a lovely building here, but it's, it's, it's a building. We, it, we can use it as our family home. And, and it's a wonderful question for us as a church family. What kind of house will we build for the Lord? We've seen a bit in, 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 in Acts here, the kind of house that the first Christians built. Oh, wonderful. It was a, it was a praying house. It was a sharing house. It was a loving house. It it was beautiful, wasn't it? What else was it? It was a fellowship house. It was a generous house. It was a Jesus-loving and Jesus-radiating house. Do you want some of that? Do you think that's a good plan? Oh, I do. What kind of house will we build for him? Jesus, you know, it's, we've got a wonderful opportunity in the heart of the city here. What kind of house will we be? What kind of a, what, what will be the, the, the hallmark? What kind of house will we be? Will it be a, like Stephen, full of grace, full of love for people? Will it be a, a house full of worship and prayer and praise? By the way, we had a lovely time of prayer this morning before the meeting. Wonderful time. We're now meeting in training room one upstairs at the front. Nine o'clock for half an hour. We had a wonderful time of prayer. What kind of house will you build for me? Oh, let it be a praying house. It's first Friday on Zoom. You haven't even got to go out your front door. Please, please be there. What kind of house will you build for me? A worshipping house. We love our, they're not there, but we, we love them, our musicians. We love them. I, I, oh, yeah, let, 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 let worship flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Worship to the Lord. What kind of house will you build? A house where the gifts of the Holy Spirit are just wonderfully loved and honoured, received, and space made for them, yeah? Come on, I'm going to do something naughty now. I'm not going to pull you out or anything, but how many of you... um, over the last few weeks, so I'm not going to pull you out, okay, but I just want to know, how many of you over the last little while, you've, you've perhaps felt, oh, I think I might have a word to bring or a scripture to bring, but, 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 but no. Come on, how many of you in the last few weeks have felt a bit like that? Come on, there's, there's a few more of you in there. All right, how many of you have ever had a word you've brought to the front, a reading, a scripture or something? How many of you have ever, come on, I'm not going to pull you out. Don't be afraid. Folks, I just want to say, stir up the gift that God has given to you. And don't leave it to the three or four who come every week. Beautiful. Thank you so much. We love it. What kind of house will you build for me? Folks, we want to hear the voice of the Lord, don't we? So please, stir up the gift that he's put in you. We're a body. We're a family. Stir up the gift in you. What kind of house will you build for me? Will you build a formal house? that you just come to and sit for a while and walk. No, no, no. A passionate house that's full of praise and worship. And we hear the voice of God through one another. Does that sound good? Does that sound attractive? What kind of house will you build for me? And it's and not, you know, welcome team. Oh, bless. We love the love the welcome team. Extending the love of Christ as people come in. Through the week, we've got opportunities. We've got this place all through the week. I can, come on, let's say it. I wonder how many of you God might stir up to come and maybe speak to Don about, I want to work in the coffee shop. I don't know how to make 
cappuccinos, but I want to work. I just want to volunteer. I want to, I want to show the love of Christ to people. Well, hey, there are hundreds of people moving in all around us. I wonder how many of you God might speak to about coming and volunteering, serving in the coffee shop, or in the kitchen, helping Linda. Or, I don't know, answering the telephone, expressing the love of Christ to someone who's inquiring and ringing. What kind of house will you build for me? What kind of house will you build for me? Do you see, we got, I think this is a wonderful question, both personally and corporately. What kind of house will you build for me? Jesus never said, get bigger, but he did say, love one another. It's not complicated. Love one another. Love one another. I don't know what, where I was going really yet. I've, I've lost somewhere now, but never mind. Dear folks, I, I feel coming out of this COVID time, it's been confusing for everybody, hasn't it? And here we are, beginning to come out now. I feel the Lord would say to us, what kind of house will you build for me? I think churches all over the country wanting to get their priorities right again. Okay, Lord, what are the things that are most important in what we're doing? What, 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 Lord, what, what kind of house will we build for you? Let it be a, a loving, praying, caring, generous, pure house where Jesus can be known, make himself known through us, through you, through me. Yeah? Are you up for that? Do you I dare to be saying to the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? How can I serve? Serving house, that's, that, it was, that's, wasn't it? How can I serve? Is it with, maybe it's with children. Young lives devoted to Jesus at a young age. How precious, how beautiful. How beautiful. You guys led the children's work here for years. How many years did you do it? Ian and Julia. 20 years? It's eight years? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Dear church, I look at Stephen and, I, and I'm provoked. This dear man glowing. <laughs> because the presence of the Lord was there in him. And it provokes me. I want that for me. I want it for you. I want it for us in these days. And as I close, look, I, tell, I want to um, invite you. This is just, this is just the way it happens. That um, King's Daily this week. The musicians can come up now. King's Daily this week. I invite you to join us for, a, a, for this coming week because it's like a, it's just the way it's worked out. We're going through chapter three of Colossians and it's like a discipleship workout. Okay? I've just read to you, end of chapter one, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then chapter three, the heading in my Bible says, living as those made alive in Christ. We've got a discipleship workout Monday to Friday going through Colossians chapter 3. T 10 minutes a day. You probably spend longer in the gym somewhere. Well, I'm sure you do. 10 minutes, discipleship workout. I'm not going to do much of a word sheet for the life groups this week. Sorry, I'll do a little one. But I invite you, it, 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 come to a, a discipleship workout. What it means, what was it? Living as those made alive in Christ. What kind of house will you build for me? What kind of house will you build for me? Let it be a Jesus-glorifying, Holy Spirit-filled, neighbor-loving family that will make Jesus known. You up for that? They're there. Lord, oh, I just want to pray for us, myself included. Lord, I, I pray, would you... Would you, give it, would you steer us? Here we are in the heart of this city. You've put us here. Here we are. Quite a mixture of people, all sorts. Look at us, Lord. We're quite a mixture. What a mixture we are. But precious, precious, precious to you. And the people that you want to be carriers of your presence into the community here and where we live. I said, Lord, I pray, please, 
Would you be speaking to all of us, me included? What kind of house would you build for me? Lord Jesus, we want to honor you. We want to live for your glory. We do. In fact, I'm going to make an appeal. If you want, if you, if you feel God speaking to you, you want to live for the glory of God. You don't know what it looks like, but you feel God's speaking to you about, about living for his glory. Uh, just on your, just stand now with me and, and, and we're, I just, we can say, here we are, Lord, we're, we're, we're available to you. Just stand now. If, if that's you, you, you just sense God on your case and, and, and you want God to use you. In some way, just on your feet, and I want to pray for us before we close. Come, Holy Spirit, precious Holy Spirit. Lord, here we are. Lord, we say in answer to that question, we want to build something that glorifies Jesus. Lord, however we can serve, whatever we can do, however we can reach out, Lord, we we want to serve a community of Jesus following, Jesus glorifying people. Come and help us. Come, Holy Spirit. I pray, stir up the gifts in us. Come, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.